which uh, was granted a license to operate, a temporary license to operate at a half a megawatt on the AM band, 500,000 watts on 700 kilohertz. Now, 50,000 watts is a lot of watts. Watt, 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 watt. <laughs> let alone a half a million. By the way, uh, when I was in college, my uh, my classmate, my roommate, was uh, a guy named Richard Hu, Richard Chi Chung Hu, he was Chinese, H-U. And uh, one day, uh, we were playing softball uh, after class, and uh, we also had in our class a guy named Richard Watts. And in that game, Hu was on first, and Watts was on second. We happened to be within driving distance of the only station that actually operated in the United States at that power. And uh, what uh, is also interesting is uh, that it was uh, about 45 years ago that I took a class down to visit WLW and Lowell Boy was one of the members of my class. I taught a communications class at the Louisville Radio School. And uh, I had visited WLW on the way to the Dayton Ham Fest <clears throat> the year before this and uh, then made arrangements for us to go up and have a tour of the facility. And uh, I took a bunch of slides, 35 millimeter slides. Folks, how many of you can find the slides that you took 45 years ago? You can, or you, you're one, you're one in a hundred. Yeah. Anyway, I, I, I inadvertently ran across those slides maybe 10 years ago, but uh, I, uh, I cannot find them now, and I've, I've wasted enough time looking for them. I've, and decided I'd just go ahead without. But anyway, Lowell was one of the members of that veteran of those old half megawatt days who would be working there. So, uh, and how many of you have ever seen that ham radio stamp? Five cent, back in the five cent stamp days. You remember what year that was? Well, no, but I used to collect stamps. I think that's all about the purple stamp. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, that was uh, 1960, uh, 1968. It was four years after we had that tour, and I went back there again. And I, I bought several of those stamps back in those days, put one on my license. Uh, and speaking of the license, I thought I'd mention something else. I, I was licensed uh, uh, 50, 57 years ago, in uh, January of 1952. And uh, so I was in uh, junior high school back then, and uh, the reason that I got my license was because of my science teacher, Fred R. Reskall, who taught uh, science and uh, had always wanted to become a ham, but never got around to <coughs> learning the code to get his ticket. And uh, <coughs> he talked to me about radio, got me interested in, in radio. Well, I'm going to give you something, because uh, you're seem to be so interested in radio. And he gave me this key uh, made by a Signal Electric Company, uh, still in good condition, and it was old then. I don't know how old it was when he gave it to me when I was uh, in eighth grade. And uh, so that key furthered my interest. How many of you had a, a teacher or some close friend, perhaps, that got you interested in radio, maybe at a younger age? And we can be very grateful for our teachers, especially those that take a special interest in us and encourage us. So Fred Reskall was the one who was responsible for getting me involved in the communications, you know, developing my interest in communications, which has led to my, my career. Uh, and uh, now 25 years, WFLQ has been on the air and uh, got me started in communications in the military. And uh, and that led all the way up to my last assignment uh, was a as the uh, public affairs officer for the uh, four star command Army Material Command located in uh, Alexandria, Virginia. So uh, 
He had a very great impact on me from eighth grade. Not too many of you that uh, were very rich when you were eighth graders. Uh, the only one I know of uh, was uh, Pal Crosley, whom we're going to talk about, who was the owner of WLW. And he was born with a silver spoon in his mouth. But uh, my income in eighth grade consisted of uh, about five dollars a month that I got for singing in the choir and delivering papers, uh, which is a commission based. And uh, so uh, I didn't have very much money. And I didn't have enough money to buy an oscillator to learn to code. But I went to a junkyard on the way home from school one day and uh, I found a, uh, a radio, an old radio and a buzzer, uh, just a, a door buzzer. And, uh, and an old car battery that I got for 50 cents. I mean, not a car battery, but it was a back, back when I was a kid, and some of you may remember the days when there were still A and B and C batteries around. And this, uh, this was a pack, it was an ABC pack, and the uh, low voltage was still good in it, and uh, it was good enough to run that buzzer. And this key. And so what I did to learn the code was I would write out something in code uh, dot dash dash dot uh, and my sister who didn't know the code at all would tap out just what I had written down on the page and, uh, and that buzzer would buzz and I would have to decode it. So over a period of uh, a month or so, a couple months maybe, I learned the Morse code from my sister who didn't know what she was doing but she did it with this key until I learned the code and then I went to the FCC and I learned a theory, I discussed the theory with Mr. Restral and uh, so as soon as I got my code speed up I went and took the exam but I didn't tell him during the Korean War and the day after I got it I went in to see Mr. Restral and said I have something I want to show you and I showed him that new license and he looked at me Bill Willis, you son of a gun. Here I've been talking about getting a ham radio license for 25 years, and you just come out and do it. So he says, well, that's going to encourage me to get my ticket. So he did, and he really bore down, and he learned the code, and uh, he became W2NLC. And we would, uh, when I first rigged him, my challenge was, well, how am I going to pay for a, a receiver and a transfer? I didn't have a receiver. That's why I had to use a, a buzzer to learn the code. See, most of you probably had a receiver to learn the code and listen to it, but I couldn't afford a receiver. Well, so my first receiver was an ARC-5. This was a receiver made in World War II for Corsair aircraft, fighter aircraft. This is the Navy version. The Army version was all aluminum. And uh, so this is the uh, ARC-26, ARC-5, Navy version, 80 meters. Uh, three to six megahertz. We still said mega cycles back in those days. But anyway, uh, this was a 24 volt receiver. It used 150 volts plate voltage, but it had a dynamo motor that clipped on the back here, converted the 24 volts to uh, 200 to, uh, to 220 volts. And uh, so I just uh, made a a, uh, I paid, uh, how do you get on the air for less than $10? Uh, not easy, is it? <laughs> I mean, when you're talking about including a receiver, 10 bucks for a whole ham radio station. That was my challenge. And, uh, and I really had to work hard to come up with 10 bucks. But I bought this receiver. This is the most expensive thing I bought. This was 5 bucks. And they sold these by the pound back during the Korean War. This was surplus, World War II surplus. And there was so much a pound, you know, whatever you wanted to buy. And uh, so I had to convert this to 12 volts and uh, put all the filaments in parallel. And this thing still works, by the way, with a power supply that I made that uh, plugs in the, in the back here. And uh, so that was my most expensive uh, investment. And next thing, of course, Mr. Rescall would give me a key. This would have cost probably close to 10 bucks back in those days, I don't know. But uh, uh, the next thing was uh, uh, out of that, out of 
of that surplus radio that I bought at a junkyard. I paid 50 cents for that radio, and it had most of the parts I needed, except for cabinet. This cabinet back then cost about two bucks, and uh, the crystal was uh, about 250, and the other 50 cents was for the the surplus uh, from the old radio that I got, and the uh, and the battery. So I got, had a whole radio station for about ten dollars, and uh, this this still works as 6L6 oscillator, and uh, the, this whole station will still work, you know, 50, 50, uh, five years, 55 years ago.